Hey there, everyone. Um, welcome to the Western Justice Center Peer Mediation Invitational 2002, day two. Um, if you were able to join us yesterday, great. If you are back again, welcome back. And if you are new to us today, welcome. Um, well, welcome. My name is Sean Gatlin. I am the Conflict Resolution Education Program Director with the Western Justice Center. And um, I am uh, accompanied by a longtime colleague and partner in crime, uh, Jason Harper, um, today. We will be moderating today um, today's event. And today's focus is the adults that are doing the work with uh, peer mediators um, in their school communities. But before we get started, um, a little bit about the um, Western Justice Center. So as we continue this work, um, the Western Justice Center, our mission is to empower people to strengthen their communities by growing the conflict resolution skills and capacity of youth, educators, schools, and community partners. The organization itself began in 1987 and was founded by a group of judges, lawyers, and civic leaders led by our Honorable Dorothy W. Nelson. The Western Je Justice Center works on multi-year basis with school, with school district partners, and we provide youth, adult, and community empowerment programs throughout the greater Los Angeles area. So this year's theme is, it takes a village, bridging generations for a collective liberation. And why is building a village important? And what does it mean to the Western Justice Center? Well, as we did our work last year and our theme last year for our youth summit was getting into good trouble. But as we continue to think about that over the last two years, we realize as an organization that we can't do it alone. In order to transform and change, we have to do this to work together. So creating a village. Yesterday, we mentioned our student leaders in the driver's seat. Today, we will be speaking to the adults that are doing the work with them and with us together. But before we get go into that and talking to our panelists, I'd love to introduce uh, you in more detail to my good friend, Jason Harper. Jason Harper received his master's degree in negotiation, conflict resolution, and peace building from Cal State University, Dominguez Hills, and his mediation training from Loyola Law School in Los Angeles, California. He created and founded Harper Conflict Resolution, LLC. It specializes in education and employment mediation. Nationally recognized as an alternative dispute resolution consultant, conflict management coach, an, altern an adjunct professor and trainer. He provides mediation and conflict resolution service to over 100 school districts and charter schools. He's a lecturer in law at the University of Southern California Gould School of Law teaching cross-cultural dispute resolution as well as adjunct professor of mediation at Pacific Coast University School of Law and Lipscomb University. Additionally, he has provided mediation and conflict resolution training for organizations such as ours, the Western Justice Center, and the International Visitors Council. He has been recognized by the, for the, by the State of California Senate and the United States Congress for his mediation trainings. Also one of the founding directors of Kids Managing Conflict, a nonprofit dedicated to promoting conflict resolution programs and funding them for K-12 grade grades, students. Sorry, I fubbed that a little bit. Welcome, Jason, and thank you for being with here with me today. It is all good. Thank you so much for, for inviting me, and uh, thank you to not just uh, Sean, but all the fine folks at the Western Justice Center. Uh, it's an honor and a privilege, once again, uh, to be a part of such an important event. So thank you. Thank you very much. Always. So as we jump in, before we get started, I want to introduce a couple of people to you are part of our panel. First, we have Heather Schoen. Heather has been a counselor at Palisades Charter School for 20 years, founded and coordinated the peer mediation 
and counsel programs on campus. She earned her bachelor's, her BA in psychology from Cal State Long Beach and her master's in counseling from LMU. <laughs> Hi, Heather. Hi. She received her master's, her MA in negotiation, conflict resolu resolution and peace building also from Cal State Dominguez Hills. Considers a peer mediation program at Pali her greatest accomplishment. Welcome, Heather. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you so much for being here, Heather. Um, one other person that we want to uh, bring on to uh, the uh, the main stage today is Marianne Siskowski. Uh, she is the site director for the UCLA After School Program at University High School, and she's been doing that for the past 13 years, I'm proud to say. Uh, she's also the staff advisor for the peer mediation program, and that program has been at the school for over 12 years. Currently, the mediation program has about 24 mediators trained by Ms. Marianne, and those mediators, with Mary Ann's guidance and direction, have successfully completed 25 mediations during this school year. Mary Ann Siskowski, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Hello. All right. All right. And also, we have Adrian Martinez coming with us today. Uh, Adrian is the assistant principal at Frida Kahlo High School, as well as the Early College Academy at LATTC. Uh, in addition to that, he is a DUI and anger management counselor for the ADAPT programs. And in counseling, he uses restorative justice methods and peer mediation to support said clients. Uh, he has a BA in history from the University of the Pacific, as well as not one, but two master's degrees in education and education administration. And he is of the belief, and I think that's uh, shared across the table, that everyone can strive to be the best version of themselves. Thank you so much, Adrian Martinez. Glad to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. And lastly, but of course, certain, certainly not leastly, uh, we have Frida Antoine. Dr. Antoine is the chairperson for the science department at Fairfax Senior High in LAUSD for the last 19 years. She has her BS in biology from St. Francis College, her MA in education from Pepperdine University, her MA in education administration from Concordia University. And she's also a WJC program volunteer and teacher extraordinaire, and also a collaborative partner with the Western Justice Center. Welcome and thank you, Frida, for joining us today. So everyone, we're, we're going to jump right into some questions for the panelists. Um, by all means, if there are, you will have the opportunity to talk to them in more detail in our breakout sessions. So if you have questions for them, let's get them ready once we're ready to go in our sessions. So everyone, and I'm going to start with Marianne first, and then we'll go in order. Uh, what impact was has the mediation program had on your school community? Marianne, will you answer that first, please? Um, what impact has the peer mediation program had on your school community? Well, it's very integrated in the school now. So um, um, being that this is an LAUSD school and that I'm my office is in the dean's office. So I work in partnership with the dean. And so it's it's used as an option for students. Um, a lot of the students for um, instead of having to go through the dean, um, it's so um, that's one of the reasons why we've done so many mediations and actually we've do, I've done within the last two weeks, I've done five more, I think. Um, so it's, 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 it's being utilized a lot um, because they haven't, they don't have a lot of options anymore within LAUSD for um, alternatives for students in terms of other kinds of things that can be done when students are sort of having conflicts with one another. So um, it's just, and it's been a very positive force on the campus because, and parents really like that this is being done. So, and that it's an option. So, um, and I'm just really, really glad that the school is um, really supportive and is um, really willing to, to, to use this sort of restorative justice tool um, and instead of you know negative consequences. Thank you, Marianne. Uh, Heather, what impact has a peer mediation program had on your school community? Heather, you're muted. Sorry. 
So similarly, you know, we use it as a lot of times as referrals from the dean's office and the deans are really thrilled because we're resolving issues instead of suspending students. Um, it, it, and, and I actually, I did research while I was in my master's program and found that it's reduced suspensions on campus, expulsions, and also overall referrals to the dean. So students who go through the process actually continue to have less referrals until they graduate if they've been through one mediation. So I found like it, it's really making an impact on those students that were, you know, difficult with the, for the teachers. I think it also sends a great message that we value community and peace and things like that. So um, having the program, students are, are, are see that, that, that that's important to us and we wanna help them to figure it out. Thank you, Heather. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Adrian, would you um, answer the question as well? Um. What impact has peer mediation program had on my school and community? I think um, peer mediation is where a lot, of, you know, sometimes students don't want to talk to adults. Mm -hmm. And it's important that they have peer mediators that can hold the discussion and train them in the right way because sometimes they understand what the students are going through more than we're going through. Mm -hmm. So when you have good peer mediators, they can help you know, get to the root of the problem and then come back to the adults and explain it to us. And also many times students are more comfortable talking to their own peers. So mm -hmm. that's where it really works. And it builds a strong community because once you get good peer mediators, then everything else just flows. And then students know they also have other students they can go to and talk about their problems it's just not coming to the adult. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely, Adrian. Um, thank you very mm -hmm. much um, for that uh, um, comment. Um, Frida, we know that um, you haven't, we're in the process of building a program at Fairfax High School, um, but I would still love to hear your thoughts on what you think the impact of a peer mediation program could and will be at um, Fairfax High School. Well, can you guys hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I just think that it would make a tremendous difference. We're going through a lot of changes in terms of we have a new principal, we're taking on um, new ways of teaching, and it's still a pandemic. So the mm -hmm. students still have things that they are working through. And mm -hmm they're relearning how to talk to each other. Mm -hmm. So, and you know, like many people, we're not necessarily precise with our language and it can have an impact on how it's heard and how it's received. And so having this program available and our principal's really open to having this program um, or even having a class on campus, um, it will really make a difference. Um, the other initiative that our school has is positive behavior um, program, PBIS. And I think this would actually be a concrete way of parents, students, and teachers understanding um, how it all goes together. Because a lot of time when you have initiatives, it's very nebulous and no one really understands, but you can understand peer mediation. Mm -hmm. And so I like the idea of um, really taking care of all of the stakeholders, knowing that this is something that we are investing both in our students and actually growing relationships between you know, students and teachers, students, student, and and with their families. Absolutely, I think that's a great. I think that's a great answer, and I, and I absolutely affirm that. Um, you know, I, I think with with peer mediation programs, it has the ability. You know, unlike a lot of other initiatives where it can actually seep through in all of those different stakeholder groups um, and everyone has the opportunity to you know understand the same concepts and to be able to implement those same concepts uh, you know with each other and and you know within their own sectors as well so i have a follow-up question for for all of you um, and so when when we talk about peer mediation programs and uh, the first question was about you know the impact on the school community Second question and a third question are a little bit more introspective. And so we want to get to know, you know, you all uh, and, and see how you uh, kind of 
think through this process, being the leaders uh, that you are. So the question that we have is, how do you see yourself being a leader in building a community of care? How do you see yourself being a leader in, a, in building the community of care? Uh, Marianne, I'd love to start with you. So, you know, in terms of like putting it to, towards um, peer mediation, I think, um, and having the, you know, being the leaders in peer mediation, sort of the, the advisors, um, you're teaching these students how to be leaders in community of care because you are their leader and you're teach and you're already teaching them, you know, conflict resolution, you know, restorative justice, and, you know, so I believe that in terms of just being a leader um, with them, you're sort of like already, you're, 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 how do I say it? You're sort of just like spreading it, spreading the love. <laughs> because, you know, when, when you are a peer mediator, that's what you're doing. It's you're, you're caring for your community. You're, you know, you're, you're trying to make peace where there was conflict. So, and this, and then you're trying to spread this. And so once they do this with some students, a lot of times too, within our program, like, a, you know, a student will be in peer mediation and they ask, well, how can I be a peer mediator? Because they really benefited from the program. Mm -hmm. So then you're, it's, you know, it's just sort of building and building. Um, so I, I think that's sort of um, how I see myself is like sort of like I'm that one person and then it goes on and goes on and goes on. So mm -hmm. that's how I see it. Absolutely. I appreciate that answer. Uh, Adrian, same question for you. So I think one of the things um, how I see myself being a leader is building the students into peer mediators. And you get to really know the students who are your peer mediators. And you kind of have a different um, bond with them because they come to you for things and they share things with you, what other students are sharing, and it builds that community. But the mm -hmm. good thing is when you have strong peer mediators in your community, if you're doing like a circle or a couple of students and their peer is over and you have another group coming in, and they can pick up right where they left off, have like a five minute conversation with the peer meters from the last period to the next period, and it just flows really beautifully. I know we were doing that before the pandemic, where, you know, the next group could come on and still resolve the conflict really easily. So you want them to be able to trust each other, trust you as a leader, but also trust the other groups, maybe in a different period, to be there and to have the students feel comfortable that are maybe going through the peer mediation knowing that you know it's not finished in one class period that the next group's going to come in and just pick up and just flow really beautifully so it's building that sense of team sense of community where everyone's on the same page working together where there's no disruptions if the students need to go back to class for their period so that's how i see me being the person getting them all on the same page, doing workshops with them, them all getting to know each other from the different periods. So it's a team effort, just not your peer mediator now, and then the next people come in. It's, you know, building that team of community with all the peer mediators where, you know, we're all on the same page and we all work well together. Yeah, and that's and that's extremely important, um, Heather. I'd love to hear your response to this question as well. Yeah, um, you know, I just think that we all want a school that where students feel safe and they feel like they belong, and um, you know, we can help them thrive. We have a really unique unique school because we have 110 zip codes represented, so they're coming from all right. over the place and trying to bring people together and and make help people to feel like they're a part of something is really important. And I think peer mediation accomplishes that when there's conflict we can help the students are amazing and and they're they're the ones that d do it and they they help to make resolve the conflict um create a place that's peaceful where people you know like in other places where that we don't have something like this there might be a fight students are sent home they're suspended they're continuing to be, get on social media and and, mm -hmm. and make the conflict continue 
And um, sometimes they're scared to come back to school. Sometimes they'll even drop out in extreme cases, you know. So to provide a place where you can really quickly resolve this, I mean, I used to do mediations with the students and it would take an hour for me to build their trust. They jump right in with the kids. So the kids are, the student mediators are amazing. They get things resolved and the kids are back in class where they're learning, which is the whole place, the whole point of being in school, right? So it helps to create that safe space to allow for peace to happen on campus, a belonging, um, yeah. Yeah, and, and it's funny that you mentioned that because, I, you know, in, in my experience with, with peer mediation, that I, I had that exact same experience where it would take me an hour to build the trust and, and right. gain that rapport with the student. But there's that, you know, inherent credibility when, yeah. when, they're, when they're speaking with a peer. There's that inherent bond and there's that inherent connection, mm -hmm. uh, which allows them to, you know, share more faster, mm -hmm. <laughs> which, which gets the, uh, the dispute resolved that much quicker. And so sure. I think that's, a, that's an important uh, answer that you gave. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Frida, I'd love, to, uh, I'd love to hear you uh, round this out on this particular question. Well, you know, when I, I read the question, I, I start to think about what's needed. And what I see that's needed is um, building capacity. And mm -hmm. so I don't believe that I, I'm the only leader right? There's a mm -hmm. lot of leaders that's there. And my job is to pull it out of my, my colleagues, my students. And there's another component of modeling. Mm -hmm. Really, you know, when being a teacher or being a person that work with children, I, have a, I feel like I have an awesome responsibility of taking mm -hmm. care of people's children. Mm -hmm. And when they send their kids out, they're sending their hearts out mm -hmm. to people they may not necessarily know. And so they're hoping that they're already sending their child to a place that's a community of care. And so I just feel like the peer mediation program is going to have that structure that's going to support the children and the teachers to have that available. Um, we say that we talk a, a big game sometimes about like we are community, we're community, but really what this program does, it gives you the concrete and the mechanisms to make that actually happen. And so yeah. as a result, people want to come to work. Yep. Students Absolutely. want to go to school. Yeah. People want to send their kids there. And when you have that, you know, you just have everything. This is why one of our panelists say that one of the program, that having this program is one of the best achievements they've had. They're not just yeah. saying it just to say it. They know it. They live it every day. <laughs> and so that's what I am excited to have on our campus. Absolutely. And then when you talk about, you know, capacity building and making sure that it's not just one person that's driving it. Um, I was told a long time ago, when just one person does it, it's a hobby. But when other people do it, then it's a movement. And so mm -hmm. I, I really appreciate the fact that you uh, that you shared that because that mm -hmm. is absolutely important information, especially for the folks, the viewers that we have that are thinking about starting a peer mediation program that have one going on. Um, building uh, that capacity building is absolutely instrumental. Sean, uh, I think you have the next question. Yeah, you know what? I, I really want to um, kind of talk about, I think everyone has kind of talked about the, 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 the focus of community and, and of care. Um, one of the things though, I think actually we kind of maybe have answered this question, talking about a community of practice mm -hmm. and um, thinking about um, from the very beginning, um, thoughts and feelings, what, what really brought this out in you and, and were you, and you bringing it to um, your administrators to the school mm -hmm. and really selling them on um, this community of practice. Mm -hmm. What are some things that you um, were able to do to get um, peer mediation and restorative practices um, happening at your school? What were some creative ways that you um, were able to, what were some of the things that basically inspired or sparked um, you to do this work in the very beginning? Oh, I'm sorry, I lost my, um, <laughs> it, it's just like technical difficulties all the way around. Hold on one second, you guys, here I go. You had Frida first. Frida. Okay, I was, wondering, I was like, I wonder if I should go. <laughs> um, well, you know something, I I was thinking about when you asked that question, it's the times, really. Mm -hmm. It's the times, um, 
that when we was off campus and mm -hmm. the 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 issues that we were dealing with globally and societally mm -hmm. that really brought it to the forefront and our students actually um, had they had an upset really what it was and they communicated it and 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 i was like the kids upset and i've been talking about peer mediation and this is the this is the opportunity we need to take advantage of this right now because we, we want them to have the tools and this is not something they're just going to do in school they're going to bring it home they're going to take this tool that's valuable and apply it to their lives when they get older you know post secondary success right we can't just say post secondary so we have to actually give them tools so they can have that and i also just um, going back to my last response before, it was, you know, I didn't get enough traction until I enrolled and inspired other teachers to see what I saw. And when they w participated in the ABC conflict training, when they had the different conflict, when they met you, Sean, they were like, oh, oh, this is not just talk. This is real. And so um, I think that's what's having it go further and further and then the resources that you guys are already sharing with me and really administration they just need to know how is this going to support whatever um initiative they're going to have so you got to make sure that you're meeting all the needs of all the stakeholders the parents are just happy as long as their babies are safe and they're learning something so we can handle that that's great and as a teacher Anything I can get them to do so they can speak, I'm all for it. And so that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> that's, that's yeah, I, yeah, you that's answered that one perfectly. Thank you, Frida. Um, Heather, would you answer that question, please? Mm, Frida's right. I mean, like the, the world has been in conflict and um, I, I don't see adults having a lot of skills to resolve that. <laughs> You know, I'm seeing a lot of division, a lot of anger, a lot of people, you know, hurting each other. And we're not really taught how to um, have a civil conversation about things we don't agree on. Um, so, you know, we want to teach the students English and math and all those things, but we also, we also want to send them into the world with character. And, and I think that a program like this, I mean, my goal is to have a campus-wide conflict resolution program where they have like mm. regular training and conflict resolution because I just don't, it took me many, many years to learn how to resolve my own conflicts without avoiding them. And I, and I, and I'd love for the students to get that message sooner. So I was actually inspired because I was part of a peer mediation, like it was part of a program in, in high school. And I actually went to the funeral of the coordinator a few years back and and at the funeral he had done so many amazing things in his life but one of his family members said the best thing he ever did was did was uh peer mediation the run the programs so i was like we need to bring that back and i was already doing counseling so or the council the circles restorative yeah. practices so yeah. um so yeah that's what made me inspired to to bring this program into the the school and um I'm seeing the students that have graduated from the program out making a difference in the world already. And that's, that's everything. It stops all the burnout that you have from being a teacher or a counselor because you get to make a difference in it and it, and it shows. So. Well, actually, and there was one other thing that, um, well, you know, Sean, when you, when you ask these panelists about buy-in, um, Heather, I know years ago <laughs> you were, you were brought, you brought up this idea of there's this curriculum that you know if we can if we can use it you know it it satisfies some a through g requirements right it uh you know and and it and it brings you know conflict resolution education into the school right i know that th i know that that had to have been uh, a barrier uh initially getting that by and how did that how did that specific uh factor help so the university of california has a, a course in restorative justice i think that we put it into the chat um and it already is approved for the G requirement. It's hard to get a class approved if you want to teach a new elective by the UCs. Right. 
but this is already approved. And if you use their curriculum, you just check the box that you're going to do it and it's, and it's done and it's approved. It, it takes away the whole process. It also is CTE certified. So if you have a CTE teacher, that's a big thing right now is getting students certified in different CTE pathways. So it already has a pathway as part of like social services, like students who want to be a lawyer or a police or fireman, it can go along with a bunch of different classes. So it's kind of great uh, restorative justice class. Um, yeah. And there's a curriculum already built in, so you can use that. And also we had our students lead a lot of the class where they, first of all, we trained some of the mediators in there. Um, they learned a lot of, of skills in the class. And then the, and then we also have the Western Justice Center train the rest of our kids. Um, but we, um, we also um, had the students lead a project. Um, we have students, we, we, they started um, asking for money for transportation on campus. And so the students led, made these videos about their, the day, of how they get to school and their, their path. It was really great. So it's been great. Yeah. And, and that just speaks to, you know, when it comes to the buy-in and getting that buy-in from the different mm -hmm. stakeholders on a school campus, yeah. um, that's one less excuse that that can't be made right, <laughs> as, right. to why, as to why this program can't happen. Right. Um, you know, oh, it's taking away from the students, you know, and then being able to satisfy those requirements right. for the UCs. Well, actually, we have something. Correct. And, and Heather, and, and Heather, I, you were the first person I ever heard uh, come up with this. And mm -hmm. so I wanted to I wanted to give you that spotlight and honor you for that. So. You know, I think that's very, very important. Let me just add, like the, the best way to get buy-in is with data. Like, and there's a lot of data out there. There's a lot of research that's been done on the efficacy of, of peer mediation and conflict resolution programs. It, it tends to help students, even with their English grades, it helps over, an overall sense of peace on campus. People, students feel more safe and belong, um, or a sense of belonging. Um, so there's a lot of research out there. If you present the data to your admin, it, it makes for an easy sell. And yeah. once you've been doing it, if you continue to collect the data, you can say, look, this has been working. And you continue to get buy-in from the administrators, from the deans, et cetera. So. Yeah, data is key. Mm -hmm. Really quick, uh, there is a question in the chat box. Does that course align with any of the LAUSD pre-approved courses? Um, I don't know. We're not part of LA. We're, we're an independent charter, so I'm not sure about the LAUSD, but because it's CTE certified and UC um, approved, I imagine it would. Yeah. If it's UC approved, then yeah. it, it's all set with LAUSD. Yeah. It meets the G requirements, so I can't imagine it doesn't. Right. We have an A through G requirements. If, if it meets the G, it, we all are yeah. good. Yeah. Excellent. It's just a matter of getting a teacher that can teach it or that's willing to teach it and room in their schedule to have it be taught. <laughs> but we all, we all need electives, so it helps. Right. And, we need, and we need electives that makes a difference. That matter, right. right. That right. matters, that's really gonna have the students want to come to school. Yeah, absolutely, right? absolutely. And so it's, um, so when every time we get a hold of an elective that's going to do that, it right. just makes everybody lives easier. I just don't even know how else to um, express 100%. it. Mm -hmm. And it's easy to, I mean, we, we got a teacher easily because the curriculum's there, you know, because mm -hmm. that's always another thing is trying to create the curriculum, but it's already there. So um, it's, it's great. Awesome. Um, well, um, I just really want to qu uh, quickly ask Adrian and Marianne um, if you guys would um, answer this question. Um, because of our technical difficulty, we were running out of, we're running a little behind. So after this question, we're going to move to our breakout sessions um, where you guys can ask some more detailed questions to the panelists and then also to our uh, two additional breakout room guests, um, Rafael Gonzalez and Sarah Newman from Fairfax Middle uh, High School. They will be in the breakout sessions as well. So um, Mary Ann, um, with that question, um, really like creating a community of practice and what it inspired you. Can you answer that question, please? Sure. Um, so, okay. So I was going to answer the other question, but I was already to answer the other one. <laughs> yeah, that, that's fine. Go for yeah. it. Okay. Yeah. So um, in terms of buy-in, um, I was really, I didn't have to do that because I didn't have to do that because the program was here before I started. Mm -hmm. And 
um, the woman who, you know, started it, I, I always call her the queen of mediation because, you know, her name was Karen Crowley. I agree. I <laughs> think we legend. all know and love Karen. Yes. Yes. So I was, and because she was the dean and I was here, I was already housed in the dean's office. I would help her a lot with mediations and just be in there. So I was, I was actually like trained by her, like just automatically. Um, but because she's gone and the program still has to go on, we obviously have to show that we can still do the program. So, you know, it was a class before and then it stopped being a class. Um, so now we meet once a week during lunch. Um, okay. And um, but I think, you know, in terms of just the, the administration seeing that it is working and I think it keeps the buy-in going because they see that the mediators are here on campus. Even some kids, like like um, the kids request certain mediators now sometimes. Mm -hmm. So the program is really known. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think that that shows them and really just, you know, it demonstrates how well the program is going and why mm -hmm. we keep keep it here. So um, I think that's that's really the, that's really why we're, we've been so successful. Fantastic. And uh, Adrian, uh, same question for you. Yes. Um, you know, we ran a similar program at a previous school I was at. You know, I sold it to the administration and we got students involved and, you know, had meetings with students, really got to know the students. And then, you know, they were able to help other students. And people are seeing, you know, these students who are kind of at risk students, you know, now turning around and becoming the leaders of the school, and I'll keep it short, you know, this was about 10 years ago at the school of that. It wasn't through the Western Justice Center, but it was similar mediation, peer mediation. And now these students, you know, I'm still friends with them on Facebook. You know, I still see them. So it really builds that sense of community. You know, they've called me at times asking me, you know, about now life issues, you know, in their 20s, having kids. But yeah. that's how you build a community and you take it back to your administration and go, you know, this is a lifelong commitment that we're mm -hmm. making with these students who are peer mediators who trust us. Mm -hmm. And so, and now they have real world problems, but we're still there for them. And so mm -hmm. it's building that bridge from, you know, them in high school to, yeah. you know, their adulthood. If you do things right, you know, the program succeeds. And then you have them come back and speak about their experiences now that they're older and, yeah. you know, how yeah. this helps them and how it helps them work through their mm -hmm. adulthood problems, you know, of life. So, I mean, mm -hmm. I think that's really great. And, you know, I see those students and, you know, it'd be great to someday, you know, have them come back and speak about their experiences in high school, mm -hmm. but how a program like this helps them to be leaders that they are today in their life 1000 percent. i think that's i think that's so important i think that's so important to uh, mm -hmm. to have folks be able to come back and say hey this is how this program impacted me and it can do the same for you uh and that just you know builds even more buy-in from there because you have that inherent credibility uh mm -hmm. like you mentioned so that's that's fantastic and and marianne i am always here for <laughs> for for a shout out to the queen of mediation so <laughs> that was that was fantastic and Absolutely. that goes back to that capacity building that uh, that we had discussed earlier. You know, mm -hmm. it's good. Great. Awesome, everyone. Thank you all so very much for um, being a part of this panel. What's going to happen now is that we are going to move into our breakout sessions. Um, you guys will all move into uh, your certain rooms. Um, so if you guys will go to the um, reception area and hop in and then click on sessions where um, you will be answering questions more deeply in more detail with uh, in the sessions. <laughs>